Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you're new here, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking to follow book reviews, if you want some reading inspiration, if you like to know what other people are reading, then feel free to stick around. Now let's talk about today's book. Today I am going to be reviewing Dangerous River Adventure on the Nahani by R.M. Patterson. So the path by which I came to this book was a little interesting. I had seen the Nahani, it's like the Nahani National Park Reserve on the northern reaches of Canada, in the northern reaches of Canada on Google Maps. So I enjoy taking a good road trip, I enjoy traveling, and usually when there's some downtime at work or when I'm just drinking a cup of coffee in the morning, I like to poke around on Google Maps. I just like to scroll around and see what sort of interesting things are in the world that I might want to add to my list of places to visit. And one day I thought, what's in Northern Canada? I don't know a lot about what's in the Northern reaches of Canada. So I went up there, poked around, found the name of this place, watched some videos on YouTube about some people who traveled there and thought, this seems kind of interesting. I'd like to learn more about it. I went to my library system. I wound up finding a book in a, li a different library that I could order to my library about this. And it was Dangerous River. It said it took place in the Nahani region. So I placed a hold on it and it came. Now, when it came, I was a little bit nervous because this is an outdoor adventure book, as in it's someone telling the tales of their adventure in this area of the world. And I don't always connect with that sort of book. Additionally, this book is recounting a trip from the 1920s that was written in this book in the 1950s. So this is a book that is already quite old. The actual adventure is around 100 years old, as in when this man went out and did the adventures. The author, R.M. Patterson, did this adventuring. It was over or around 100 years ago. And this book itself was written in the 1950s. So I had a little bit of nervousness and apprehension, but I want to say right now that all of that should have gone out the window, or it did go out the window, when I started reading this book. This was a fabulous, fabulous book. So R.M. Patterson, the author of this book, was sitting in his house in London, essentially on some family affair, and saw, like I did, just saw this region marked on the map. Of course, this was in, I think, the early 1920s. So there was a lot less information on this region in England than there is today available freely on the internet. But he said, I'm going to go visit there. And with all the confidence of a man in the 1920s, he went out there and he visited. And I just have a lot of respect for him just deciding that he was just going to go somewhere and then getting the resolve and going. And this book is a book he wrote after the adventures in the 1950s, recalling this his trips um, on the Nahani River. So Arm Patterson is the author and also the narrator of this, and he's talking about the adventures that he took in the 1920s. This book recounts two trips. There was one one year where he just went into this river valley region for a summer period, and then another trip that he took like the next year or two years later where he spent about a year in that region. He did an overwinter trip in that region. And he just recounts some of the things he saw, the adventures he had, the troubles he had, um, the places he camped, the nature that he saw, the hikes he took. Essentially, the author was prospecting. He was looking for gold, but you also get the sense that he really just has a deep appreciation for the outdoors and wants to share his stories and the experiences that he has in this region. So the Nahani River area, even to this day, is incredibly remote. It's hard to access and it is incredibly wild. I think I was when I was reading or watching the videos online before I placed a hold on this book and got it, I believe they were saying that this, this national park gets like a thousand visitors a year. It is a very small number of visitors that this national park gets each year, which is much a very, very small number of visitors to a national park. There are some national parks that I'm sure get that many visitors in a day, especially at some of the bigger, well-known national parks. So to get so few visitors means it's very, very much untouched by humans and their inevitable change to the environment that they do when they move into a region, meaning that it is this still beautiful, remote, natural region, the way that R.M. Patterson saw it in the 1920s and indeed all the people who were living there before R.M. Patterson came in. So this is a book written in the 1950s and in some ways the age does show a little bit, particularly in the way that the author feels comfortable writing about the people who were living there and had been living there for thousands of years. The natives, they were some of the ways that they are discussed and written about, you think, mm, this feels a little bit dated. We, we definitely wouldn't use this sort of language or say these sort of things these days. I feel like that does show progress as a human species. 
I guess it shows that we have grown and we've recognized that maybe the way we were talking about or treating other people wasn't right. However, in some ways that age doesn't matter. I was really nervous that reading something about an adventure that took place over a hundred years ago, it was something I wasn't going to be able to connect with. I felt like these characters were going to be very stilted. What do I have in common with a prospector from the 1920s who wandered into um, like the Northwest Territories in Canada to go prospecting for gold in a remote region for several years. I do not have any of those characteristics um, in common, so I I had a little bit of fear that I wasn't going to be able to connect to this adventure, but the author's writing style is incredibly engaging and entertaining. Through all these adventures, I found myself laughing, which was something I wouldn't think I was going to be doing. I got this book out to be educated to learn more about the region and to learn more about the area, and I didn't consider that I would find his tales entertaining. I feel like he was able to make this connect, this human connection to the reader a hundred years removed from the actual adventure itself, which really shows that the author has a real skill in writing. It says at the bottom of this, a truly enchanting book by the New Yorker, so it got some sort of I'm totally blanking on the word. Some sort of review which show which other people thought in the 1950s this was a really enchanting book. And at first when I got this book out I thought that was a little bit of flattery. I was like how enchanting can it really be? I expected more or less a dry account of someone paddling up a river and then trapping some animals and then paddling back down and selling the furs at a profit and maybe finding some gold. But I was surprised at how engaged I was in the book. When I sat down to read it, I expected to read it in little sections over a large chunk of time, but I wound up reading it in two days. I read half one day and half the other day, and it was an incredibly enjoyable trip to read. If you like any sort of outdoor adventure, if you want to learn, read about people going to different places, if you like to read about maybe outdoorsmanship and how people survive in remote or difficult climates, then Dangerous River is definitely going to be a very enjoyable and interesting book for you. I felt like I learned a lot. I felt like the beauty and respect that he had for nature was really well conveyed to me. I feel like his his writing style is entertaining and engaging. I feel like even though it's a hundred years removed from when the adventure occurred, it still draws the reader in and makes you interested in knowing what's going on. And I feel like he does a really good job of discussing some of the historical things that today we're even more removed from. So we're getting the perspective of someone who lived and was adventuring in this region, for lack of a better verb, adventuring in the region in the 1920s. Writing about, if a modern reader wrote about this trip today, they would be relying, of course, on first-hand accounts or whatever whatever they could find, but they ultimately wouldn't be writing from their personal experience doing this in the 1920s. By having this author write this, we're getting more of a first-hand account. It almost reminds me of this book. I got called Growing Up in Iowa or something, and it was someone interviewing people who grew up in Iowa, In but the book was written in the 19... I forget, 70s or something. Basically what I'm trying to say is sometimes I feel like people overlook books that have, were published quite a number of years ago, forgetting that these books contain a first-hand account from people who are no longer living. So people who were adventuring in the 1920s are um, highly unlikely that many of them are going to be still living today. So to get a book that's older that was written in the first-hand a, written as a first-hand account from someone who lived during that time, I feel like is something that's often overlooked. And it's a danger that can happen if people, which I don't think people mean to fall into it, but if they're only looking for books that are published in the last five or 10 years or so, then they, they're not, their net isn't being cast wide enough to capture voices from people who were writing um, 50, 60, 100 years ago. So I really enjoyed this book and I'm so glad that I checked it out. I'm very glad that I didn't immediately return it when I saw it and thought, I don't know if outdoor adventure is really my thing. I'm glad I sat down and read it and gave it a chance because I really, really enjoyed it. This was a five star read. I enjoyed this so much more and I feel like when I get a book out and I enjoy it, it's a great thing and I love it. But when I get a book out and I don't expect to enjoy it or I enjoy it more than I expected to enjoy it, it is even better. It's like eating a meal that you didn't think was gonna be as good as it is. It's that pleasant surprise. The opposite is getting a book that you want to read and want, or you always want to read it, but that you want to enjoy a lot and it winds up falling flat. I feel like expectation can play a lot into how you perceive or how you rate a book. And because I didn't really expect to enjoy this as much as I did, it was a pleasant surprise and I highly recommend it. I'm going to be recommending this to several people in my life that I think 
enjoy this kind of genre of outdoor adventure, outdoorsmanship. I think there's a lot of people who would enjoy reading this who may not have heard of it because it is a slightly older book. And if you're one of those people who enjoys that sort of adventure or enjoys reading about this section of the world or enjoys travel adventures from the early um, 20th century, then maybe give Dangerous River a read. I really enjoyed it and this is a genre or type of book that I usually don't enjoy reading. So the fact that I enjoyed it means that you, someone who maybe enjoys this genre, enjoys reading about this kind of thing more than me, will definitely enjoy it. If you have any books that are like this that you think I should be reading, any suggestions, anything that you'd like to see in your review, please leave it in the comments below. I love to hear it. I love to get your comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.